this video i'll be talking about dry socket it is one of the most common post operative complications following a dental extraction with an onset of around 3 days it may last for about 12 days on an average it was first described by crawford in 1876 now the incidence of dry socket ranges from 1 to 4% of all the extractions and it is seen in 45% of mandibular impacted third molar extractions it is commonly observed in patients who are in their third or fourth decade of life there are several names given to it the most common ones you will come across are alveolar osteitis and alveolitis sicca dolorosa Quickly let's see the definition of dry socket. This one is given by I R Blum and I have divided it into 5 points to help you grasp it more easily. So dry socket is characterized by post operative pain surrounding the alveolus that increases in severity during a period of 1 to 3 days after a tooth extraction followed by a partial or total loss of the blood clot from the socket. with or without halitosis you can remember the key words that i have highlighted with the help of the mnemonic p a s c h or patch the pathophysiology of dry socket can be best explained with the help of burns hypothesis which was given in the year 1972 Dry socket is mainly the consequence of fibrinolytic activity or fibrinolysis which is the degradation of the fibrin which is present in the blood clot now this may ensue after a tooth extraction either due to trauma or infection trauma may lead to plasminogen activator release now this plasminogen activators are of two different kinds the stable and the labile kind It is believed that the stable kind it remains locally and it is responsible for dry socket. Plasminogen is transformed to plasmin that is the active enzyme which causes breakdown of fibrin and ultimately leads to dissolution of clot and leads to painful dry socket. In order to avoid confusion between fibrinogenesis and fibrinolysis remember these key notes when prothrombin is transformed into thrombin by clotting factors and then this thrombin it acts to transform fibrinogen into fibrin this leads to normal clot formation or fibrino genesis but when the efficient plasminogen activators they activate the plasminogen which is then converted into plasmin which leads to fibrin lysis or clot dissolution which is also called as fibrinolysis alveolar bone usually has no plasmin in a healthy state whereas dry socket is characterized by presence of stable tissue activators and lots of free plasmin Clinically how does dry socket present to a dentist Now a patient who has recently undergone an extraction may come to you with a chief complaint of pain that radiates to the ear neck and temple which varies in frequency and intensity and more importantly it responds poorly to the over the counter analgesics patient may also complain of halitosis or bad breath with foul taste in the mouth and reduced mouth opening and regional lymph node inflammation on the affected side you may remember these points with the help of this mnemonic now what is not seen or the points that will help you in differential diagnosis dry socket interestingly does not present with fever pus swelling and redness remember these four points with the help of this mnemonic According to McGregor etiology of dry socket includes four possible factors first bacterial infection Nitzan proposed that an anaerobic bacteria is responsible for dry socket that is T denticola which contributes to fetid odor and foul taste in the mouth second may be trauma due to extraction third due to certain biochemical agents or fourth due to use of undue amounts of adrenaline in local anesthetic as we know proper wound healing is very important to avoid complications such as dry socket so the three important factors for granulation tissue formation in an extraction socket include the vascular architecture and circulation in the area of extraction and the integrity of blood clot which forms after an extraction you can remember these factors of etiology with the help of this mnemonic next the risk factors which in no particular order include the following 
First, the medical status or condition of the patient. The sex of the patient, as we know, dry socket is more commonly seen in females than males. The degree of difficulty encountered during extraction and whether the buccal bone was left intact or not after extraction. The number of teeth extracted, the age of the patient and whether there was pulpitis in the tooth extracted, the site of extraction and if the patient has a habit of smoking, specifically chronic smoking. If the patient is female, you need to know if the patient is on oral contraceptive pills or not and how is the oral hygiene of the patient. You can remember these 11 points with the help of this mnemonic. Coming to the classification of dry socket, Hermesh et al. in 1998 classified dry socket into three types. First is the superficial alveolitis marginal type in which the mucosa covering the alveolar processes of the jaw is inflamed. There is only partial granulation tissue present and patient may complain of pain. In the suppurative alveolitis type, the clot is infected. It is covered by a grey-green membrane with bony fragments. Patient may complain of pain and fever may also be present. Last is the classic dry socket in which there is exposed bone, there is loss of clot, pain, fetid odor and lymphadenopathy. Microscopically, that is, in the histological sections or the HNE staining of the dry sockets, one may see, or as you can appreciate in this photo, the aqua arrows point towards the inflammatory cellular infiltration, primarily macrophages, giant cells, and T cells. The yellow arrow points towards the inflammation of connective tissue and the contiguous mucosa. The black arrows point towards the necrosis of lamina dura or the socket lining and there is also degradation of blood clot. Coming to the last section that is prevention and management. You can remember these four letters that is SHRI. The first and most important is thorough history taking. Both medical and dental history of the patient should be recorded. To rule out any risk factors as we discussed before to avoid complications. Next is the surgical protocol. Meticulous attention should be given to proper planning, procedural details, sterilization and the surgical skills during the tooth extraction. And also proper instructions both pre and post extraction should be given to the patient such as no smoking, no intense sneezing or coughing. Patient should be asked to maintain a good oral hygiene by gentle tooth brushing and mouth rinsing. The clinician may also give supplemental written advice to ensure maximum compliance. Next, treatment. Pharmacological prophylactic interventions include first antibiotics, antiseptics and lavage, antifibrinolytics, low level laser therapy, use of steroids, obtundin dressing. Remember these six treatment options with the help of this mnemonic. Let's discuss antibiotics. As per research, pre-operative administration of prophylactic antibiotics is been proven to be more effective in reducing the incidence of dry socket. Some authors, however, suggest that systemic antibiotics should be reserved for certain high-risk cases or cases which have had a previous history of dry socket. The antibiotics examples include penicillin, clindamycin, tetracycline, and most importantly metronidazole. It has been found to be most effective as per the literature. Owing to its narrow antimicrobial spectrum of activity, it also targets primarily the anaerobic bacteria and it has reduced chances of developing bacterial resistance and has fewer side effects. Two clinical products used by dentists in management of dry socket include alvogel and alvocure. They are available in fibrous paste form which can be placed directly or placed on a gauze piece and then packed into the socket very gently. The patient is asked to close and it is left inside. On the recall appointment it is removed or if the socket has been sutured with this gauze piece inside then the sutures are removed and, and the gauze piece as well because these paste forms they do not dissolve on their own. One important finding is myosferulosis. 
विच इज़ अ कॉम्प्लिकेशन सीन वेन एन एंटीबायोटिक ऑइंटमेंट विद अ पेट्रोलियम बेस इज यूज इन एन एक्सट्रैक्शन सॉकेट दिस इज एन हिस्टोलॉजिक फाइंडिंग इन विच फॉर्मेशन ऑफ क्लियर स्पेसिस इज सीन इन द एरिया ऑफ हीलिंग विद ऑल्टर्ड इरेथ्रोसाइट्स विच अज्यूम द अपियरेंस ऑफ स्फेरूल्स दैट मे बी मिस्टेकन फॉर माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स नेक्स्ट एंटीसेप्टिक्स a bicyanide antiseptic with antimicrobial properties that is chlorhexidine has to be prescribed to the patient both pre and post extraction that is 15 ml of 0.12% rinses for 30 seconds maximum for 2 weeks this helps reduce the microbial load and prevent dry socket copious saline lavages after extraction help remove any root remnants or fragments and debris which if left behind in the extraction socket may contribute to alveolar osteitis coming to antifibrinolytics both para hydroxy benzoic acid or aponil which is the trade name and tranexamic acid has been investigated for management of dry socket but with mixed results these may help inhibit the plasmin activity literature surrounding these seems to reflect a passing trend and although they are still available in the market they are not the first choice steroids that is corticosteroids particularly local application of a combination of hydrocortisone and oxytetracycline in gel form can help reduce post operative complications but they cannot help prevent dry socket one example is teracortil more commonly given to patients who have undergone impacted mandibular molar extractions Also more recently low level laser therapy continuous wave diode laser has been shown to increase oxygen supply cause vasodilatation and improve wound healing and reduce pain and inflammation in an extraction site now let's not forget the obtundin dressing which are more routinely used in clinical practice by dentists they are more cost effective and easily available first you have to remove any sutures if present followed by copious irrigation with saline and betadine under la if required mix zinc oxide eugenol in a semi solid consistency and apply to an iodoform ribbon gauze they call the patient and replace it every 2 to 3 days until the pain subsides however be cautious of the irritant local effect of eugenol and interference with wound healing lastly more recently plasma rich in growth factors such as epithelial fibroblast and vascular growth factors have shown remarkable success in management of dry socket which can be attributed to the regenerative properties which help in accelerated wound healing and reduce patient pain and discomfort thank you so much for watching i hope this video was helpful do like and share and subscribe to the channel dentistry unfiltered